Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I think center drills are so cool and a bunch of people have asked uh, that we do a video about them, so here we go. First, let's compare them to a regular drill bit a little bit. They both have a very, very similar end with basically just an angular axial clearance on there that does the drilling. That's where the similarities end. A drill bit has this uh, land portion just behind the cutting edge all the way up the length of the flutes and it's round or more, you know, properly it's cylindrical. And then the whole area behind that is relieved so it can't rub and pick up and cause extra friction. A uh, center drill doesn't have that at all. This entire area behind the cutting edge is relieved. And this has both a radial relief and an axial relief. And we're going to get into that more as we talk about it. So this area here, uh, I've, I've made a pretty rough, over-exaggerated little sketch to show you the axial relief that's ground into those. Now it's too faint, it's too gradual and slight to see by eye, but we can see that with uh, the calipers and we'll also be able to see it with the dial once we get this in the machine. This area also has a radial relief, which again we can't see by eye, but we'll easily be able to detect that with the dial once we get it into the machine. Now this area is a bit more complicated. It has a combination of radial and axial relief, and we'll work through how to determine those once we get it in the machine. When sharpening these, it is super critical that this 60 degree angle here be maintained, and exactly. These are quite often used to create center holes for use in a lathe and so on, and uh, I'll show you here in this very crude sketch why it's so important. If the center drill had too great an angle, the center would only contact across basically one line and you would lose all the remainder of that support. And if I exaggerate the other way where the angle was too narrow, then again, you would only touch in one line, but in a different place in, in your center hole. And again, this would not be offering great support. That line of contact could wear out very quickly, cause your part to become loose and you could lose accuracy very quickly. So there's probably a, a several different ways you could actually accomplish doing all this, but um, I, I've chosen what I think is going to be the simplest way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this is my grinding wheel I'm drawing now. I'm going to very carefully dress my uh, grinding wheel to exactly the 60 degree. And then this small little angle here, which I haven't calculated, but it'll be very, very slight. And that will allow us to plunge in with our grinding wheel in this direction. And if need be, travel slightly with our grinding wheel in this direction and clean all these surfaces up at one time in one shot. I've picked out a grinding wheel, which has uh, got a profile that's eh, somewhat close-ish to where we want to end up. And that just will let me take the least amount of material off uh, and material costs money. So this is the best wheel I have to start with to dress for this profile. So we are dealing with all kinds of different angles here. And so again, center height of everything being equal is going to be hugely important. I've got the graduations on my work head at 30 degree at the 30 degree mark. Of course, I don't trust that. That just gets us kind of close, gets us in the ballpark. I've done some quick math, some trigonometry to determine if I travel the table a given amount this way, how much should this dial travel in and out this way riding against the spindle. And so I just chose to lock my table out with one inch of travel and I'm measuring that with this dial. I was careful to make sure this dial was uh, straight this way and, and this way so that it's not out either way, it's straight to the table and I've got my one inch of travel set here. And then this dial, this one has to be exactly at center height. That's critical. And I also made sure it was straight both this way and this way as best I could. And I just kept adjusting um, the rotation of my work head until I got this dial reading the exact right amount. And now I can be confident I'm gonna be creating exactly a 60 degree angle on there. 
Now that I'm confident that my spindle is exactly at the right angle, I can go ahead and dress that angle onto my wheel. And of course, it's also super important that my dressing uh, diamond is exactly at center height, and it is. Now I want to put this very, very minute angle onto the grinding wheel. And I went ahead and did the math, a little more trigonometry, and it turns out that per side this angle is 0.38 of one degree. And it's a super tiny angle, but it is important, and we do want it on there, so I'm going to go ahead and do that next. So for this second angle, I've got my dials in the same position, but I'm using a slightly different method. So for that first angle of the 60, 30 degrees, uh, it was super critical and by going one inch of travel because this is so much less than one inch that uh, any small tiny amount I was out over one inch would be non-existent by the time I got down to this little length here whereas this angle now is significantly less important so just by measuring the length of this tip of this tool the width of the cutting edge and the width back here I've determined how much over that length the diameter changes and so I've dialed I've got this set so I can dial per side so in moving at the length of the tip of the drill I get a dial reading the amount uh, that the one side should be tapered at and I've got that set up here now now that I'm happy with this setup uh, I can go ahead and dress the second angle onto our wheel got both those angles correct on the wheel now so by dialing my spindle into zero it'll put both angles exactly in relationship to where I want them on the tool so now it's time to set the tool up in the in the fixture and what I've done is I have my zero mark aligned on the fixture and I've got my uh, cutting edge at the tip of the tool slightly below center and this will ensure that I'm giving it the relieving action I want to as the, uh, the cutting edge passes through center and up and around all the way until the back of the tooth, the trailing edge, uh, is ground and then the machine will reset and get ready for the next tooth. I should mention that uh, it's important that I have this fixture dialed in uh, perfectly this way uh, because if not, uh, all that effort making the angle correct on the wheel would still make the tool be the wrong angle. I currently have the camming features locked out on this so this spindle is just spinning around and with my test dial at the cutting edge by rotating past it here you can see the clearance that's in there and so the next thing I want to do is set this machine to get that running zero that whole way that'll mean I'm exactly recreating the radial clearance that it currently has on it. So I've got the radial relief matched as, as well as possible. Here we are at the cutting edge and as I start to rotate you can see we're staying at zero, staying at zero. Now what this is, you can see the dials running plus just a little at the very back edge of the tooth and what I expect that is is one of two things. Either there was a slightly different profile on the cam that created this in the first place or they left a little tail at the back where their relief stopped um, before mine is stopping the relief. And either way, it doesn't matter. I've matched that, got it running zero for the, the, you know, the worst part of this rotation. And that little bit at the back isn't going to hurt anything. So I'm happy with that. I've got my axial relief set up now. I've rotated my dial to be somewhat uh, true to the angle that's, that's on the tool at this place. And uh, here we are rotated to the leading edge of our cutting edge and we're at zero. And as we start to rotate, you're going to see two things. Uh, this dial is going to start traveling in the plus direction. That's going to show the uh, axial relief that's being put on this. This one is going to stay pretty close to zero, at least at first, like this. 
And then this one does have a bit of a tail at the end, same as it did down here, and I'm not the least bit worried about that. It's the area directly behind the cutting edge that I'm really striving to maintain here because that's gonna give it the best balance between cutting freely and the edge not wearing out prematurely. So I'm trying to copy the manufacturer's angles as closely as I can there. But again, my cam is likely just a wee bit different than the cam that was used to make this. And so even though I do have quite a bit of adjustability here, I'm not concerned that I can't get it perfect. That does not surprise me. I'm pretty much ready to touch off, but I, I want to explain one challenge uh, real quick here. And maybe uh, looking at these wheels would give a better idea. I have super fine control over my infeed. I can go half the hour time, whatever I want basically there. So that's super controllable. The lengthwise travel is much less controllable. It's much more coarse. So uh, what I'm going to do is come in super easy till I just touch the part that's nearly uh, straight and then I'm going to work my way over with the more coarse wheel until I get into the angled part. There's no way I'm going to hit them both exactly at the same time and I think this is just my safest bet for touching off gently and precisely. surfaces. I'm going to infeed just a little. Just freshen that edge up some. So that does it guys for all of our angled and uh, relieved areas with the radial and the axial relief on them. Now if this was also dull on the end, uh, you could just do the same as you would do the normal drill bit there. So we're, we're not even going to bother doing that today because that's pretty standard stuff and we've done that before in, in previous videos. But you see there we got a decent surface finish and we were able to uh, clean it up, freshen it up without taking a whole lot at all off of it, but it is now good as new, sharp as new. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to help support the channel, consider joining us over at Lappy Mountain Living at Patreon.com. I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to have some great conversations and we're going to do a lot of other fun stuff over there. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.